let me say what a joy it is for me to be here today and for each of us and you who have come this morning just to be able to say thank you for being here and the opportunity. I know some are listening to us uh, because of the weather. They're unable to get out or, or feel fearful about that and and rightly so because there's still some patches of ice out there and so we certainly want to be in prayer for one another. All of us who have enjoyed the warmth, uh, we have so much to be thankful for, don't we? There are folks around us that I know who have lost power. I'm thankful for those who have done all they can to keep ours going. Some at the plant, some are on the line, some are working outside in this. We certainly want to continue to remember them and all of our, uh, our first responders, our police, and many who make things happen, and uh, many of the, those who are working steadily and consistently in our hospitals uh, as they take care of those who are in nursing homes or hospitals, those who need health care. So much that we are blessed with in this country, so much we are blessed with being in Kentucky. Uh, how many of you would much rather be here than in jail? <laughs> I'm trying to get you to raise your hands, and I know this is a perfect way of doing that. I'd much rather be here than in a hospital or in jail, but I'm thankful for the opportunity to come to worship our Lord today. Keeping Christ in Christmas. What do you preach on a day like this? The 25th day of December. Tomorrow, I have to start something again. Because there's 365 days till Christmas. I always find great joy and compassion from several of my pastor friends and several of those in my family who just love to express how much they appreciate me reminding them over and over. Some even to the point I'm almost afraid to see them for another year or two until they calm down. But in the midst of that, this is something to celebrate Often, what we rebel against is not the season itself, but it's all of the hype. It's all of the hustle. It's all of the things that at times, we're not careful, that steal the joy. Not that those things can't be fun in themselves, because the end of the hustle is to be with family, to be with those that you love, to be around people that you care about, and to demonstrate our care for others. But how do we keep Christ in Christmas? It's so easy to lose that focus, isn't it? I'm looking at John 3.16 today, and as I look at that, it's just a typical passage, and I've got three simple ideas I want to share with you in the brief moments we have. I'm not going to take a long time for this. I want to be brief about it. But in doing so, I want to help you understand as well. There are things that we need to take away during the season of Christmas and to be thankful for. Let's look at John 3.16. He said, it's a common passage, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Let's bow and pray. Father, we thank You again for Your love, for Your grace. I thank You for the great folks here at Paducah First. I'm thankful for all that we have experienced uh, in my time here, Lord, that I, I've just been a part of and being blessed by being around so many good folks and so many folks that have prayed for us, so many folks that are lifting up you, Lord, as they worship and as they continue faithfully doing what you called them to do. I know, Father, many are looking forward to uh, even more celebration with family and friends, and I pray that you would give safety and that you would honor yourself in all that we say and all that we do in this service. In Christ's name, amen. As I look at it, just in this three simple ideas that remind me how that as we search for the real meaning in Christmas, there are simple thoughts that are given right here in John 3, 16. Matter of fact, what's interesting about this passage is, is that it's something that we all uh, can grasp and this is a passage that has many different truths flying out of it. It just comes in the face of all of us as John writes this because we think of it as the gospel cry, and it is. Because what makes today special, we're not just thankful that there's a babe in a manger. That is true. 
But beyond that, He is the incarnate one. He is God in flesh. Yet He never ceased being God. What He did, He laid aside for the moment. All the powers, all of the things that He had prior, He just laid them aside. He didn't stop being that, but He took on flesh. And for the first time, this is what I want you to grasp out of it, for the first time, God the Son, who existed, He was there in Genesis 1, He was there prior to any created acts. He is God who is, who was, and who always will be. He became flesh and took on physical limitations for you and me. Could you imagine that? Someone who never tasted hunger, rejection, who never felt pain, who is God, and He became a man to experience your death and mine. As I get into the passage, I want you to understand this. In the passage, it's very clear about this to you and to me. God is holy. And this is what makes it significant. God loves you and I, and the Bible says God is love. But it doesn't say that anywhere in Scripture, it doesn't say love, love, love. But it does in Isaiah 6 say this, that as the angelic seraphim were crying out, Holy, holy, holy. God's love flows from His holiness. God's justice and righteousness flows from His holiness. His holiness demands that sin has a penalty. Without the remission, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Everything that took place in Leviticus is answered in Hebrews. In Leviticus, it talks about the priesthood. It talks about how to worship God. But if you go back over into Hebrews and read it carefully, you're going to find there is one great high priest. Aaron was just a symbol of he who is to come, Jesus the Messiah, the perfect high priest, the one who would lay his blood down. There is only one sacrificial lamb that is without sin and without blemish, and He is Christ. Think about that just for a minute. Because in the midst of that, our Christmas is family, it is love, it is presence to those that we care about, and especially our little ones at times, and we find a lot of joy in it. But my friend, we need to also understand as a believer our great joy comes from knowing Christ comes from his love for us three things one is giving as Christ is to give self the very first thing as you look at that is self how to give yourself now here's something I want to say thank you Many of you have stepped up. I sent out some texts this morning just saying to some of the ministry folks that I work with here, how thankful I am for you because I don't say that enough. And I I want you to know as a congregation of people how you have folks working here who love you. Some are ministry staff. Some are those who are in our offices and working to make sure daily operations are going. Some of those are people like you who come in to make sure Things are unlocked, the heat is on, things are taken care of. All of the things that go on, much happens behind the scenes before this ever happens now. We need to say thank you for that. I'm glad we have our church security. Who would have thought 50 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago maybe, we'd have to be talking much about church security. But we do. Safety is an issue. Security is an issue. Caring for others. A lot of you have to step up and do that. Where our church is right now at Paducah First, I want you to know that we are at a point and stage in our life, my friend, we need you. We need you to step up. We need you to sacrifice some of yourself. Now, here's the rule about that, and I'm not going to go into that too far. I don't want to take too much time trailing down that path. But in this path, I want you to understand there is a, what is called the Pareto Principle, 80-20. You've heard that. 
that 20% of the book that you bought is really what you want and you just got 80% of the other. I've written, and I've written chapters for textbooks, and I've written chapters for uh, practical things that we do at the Kentucky Baptist Convention or at seminary, and in doing that, you most of the time when you read, I speed read, and when I do that, I go through to find what I'm really interested in. Uh, I don't think I'm the only one that does that. If a teacher says, you better know this book, you know what I've done? I'll get slapped for this by teachers, but I read the intro, I read the conclusion, and I read the middle. I can usually find the 20% I'm looking for. Now, that's sad to do that. It didn't read the whole book, but you know what I'm doing? She tells me to read it, or he tells me to read it. I want to find out if it's worth my time. Can I value it? Well, I found that it was because the difference between an A and an F sometimes is that you actually read the content in it. But, but as I think about the 80-20 rule, 80% of the people do very little in a church other than show up. Now, there are people that have reasons for that. It may be physical. It may be time constraints. But all of us are busy. But sacrificing yourself. Can you imagine this? If at any time I could have gone to heaven and said to Jesus, you need to come and die for me. No. No. How could I do that? How could I ask someone to come and to do that? Because that's the second point here is not only is it about self, it is about sacrifice. Giving as Christ is to give sacrificially. For God so loved the world that he gave. And gave what? His only son. Notice the relationship here. God the Father, God the Son, the first and second person of the Trinity. And out of that, the relationship is it's unbroken at any time. And the sacrifice isn't just that he came, but he came willingly to die for you and me. In World War I, World War II, and any other war, but particularly as I think about those mothers who said goodbye to a son, knowing it was a world war. And many of them knew that if they heard the knock at the door, the ultimate sacrifice had been given. And what a, what a discouraging thought to be able to give your son, your daughter, in a time like that. That's why we celebrate as a country those who serve. But thinking about Jesus who gave even more. The comfort of glory. And he never presumed upon who he was as God. He sacrificed. How much do we sacrifice? We throw a little in, a little out. Something I, I, I won't give names, but... Uh, there was a guy when I was a kid growing up in church. The, the boys the, used to take up the offering. They'd let us young teenagers or preteens take it up. And I remember a guy one time when he was doing this. This is what he used to do. This is back in the old days. Didn't have a lot of money. And, and he would say, Larry, he'd tell me this ahead of time. I'm going to throw $20 in the plate, but I need 15 back after the service. Yeah, you, you got it too, don't you? And he'd do that. A plate come by and he'd reach over and he'd go like that and throw it in there. Everybody saw it. I mean, there wasn't 50 people there at the most. But he'd throw it in there. And we throw it in there. You know what I forgot? At the end of the service, I forgot to go get his $15. It wasn't intentional. He would probably think it was, but it wasn't. But I remember whenever I did that and I... Didn't get it for him. We had, an, we had an old gentleman. He's like a grandpa to me. And he would go up. And you remember the green bags? If you've ever been to those kind of churches, they had the green bag. And I remember he'd go up and he'd wait. And just before that man came up to say, oh, hey, hey, I got 15 like that. And he'd go, Chow. and he'd put it in there real quick and zip it up. And he said, belongs to God now. <laughs> he sacrificed. It wasn't willingly, but he sacrificed. Jesus sacrificed willingly. 
How much am I willing to sacrifice? Sometimes we think coming to a church service is sacrifice. I'm the preacher, so I could honestly say to you, probably it is sometimes as you sit there and endure it. But the reality of it is, we're here not because of music, not because of preaching. We're here to celebrate Jesus. I've been in churches to where the sermon wasn't much. The music was less than that. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus the Christ, when He shows up, none of that matters. None of that matters. We live in a world today about performance and image. But my friend, right at the heart of it, it doesn't matter how much you have or how much you don't have, how you dress or how you're not able to dress. It's not about any of that. It is about Christ Himself and you and I as we give to Him. It's more than that. As we sacrifice who we are for Him. And lastly, here's substitute. Substitute. He is our substitute. As we think about that, Christ gave by coming for us. God loves us so much that He sent His Son to die in our place. He is the great sacrifice for us. I was talking about that earlier as I think about the act of redemption. Redemption is all about Christ paying our price. Isn't that wonderful? It even talks about in Ephesians where as the down payment that it talks about him being the earnest in the old text. It would say earnest. Uh, In newer translations or versions, it may say something like our substitute. But in the process of that, that's who he is. He is our substitute. And he came for us. As I think about being that, that person who's been sacrificed for and substituted for, how should I respond this Christmas? How should I respond? How do I say thank you to the Lord? I don't have an answer to that. I'm not going to give you an answer. I want you to think about today, where is it? Could I plug in? Where is it? Is there a need? Where is it, a person that needs Christ, that I could share the gospel with? It may be someone that you are uh, at a restaurant or at a store. It may be somewhere along the line you see somebody whose countenance is down. What I found a lot of times is, even in there, is that when somebody is berating somebody uh, and complaining about something at a restaurant or in a store or something, many times I can just go up and, and say, boy, your hair looks good today. And, You know, I'm I'm so thankful that you're willing to do this. You know, it's amazing how that makes a difference, isn't it? We can all point out what's wrong, but sometimes just saying what's right. And as I think about that, where do I need to share Christ? Let me ask you, where's God placed you? In family? With friends? In community? Your neighborhood? Where you work? Who around you could you just lift up Could you pray? Could you do something for? Where does God want you to plug in? You see, He is to us our sacrifice. And He is our substitute. And He has given so much for us. What am I giving for Him? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes if you would. And I want us to prepare for a time of the invitation. What has God said to you this Christmas that you just need to say, thank you, Jesus? I'm thankful for my salvation. Are you? If you do not know Christ and His resurrection, today is the day that you could receive the greatest gift possible to humanity. It's not enough that He sacrificed Himself for you and became your substitute, you must put your faith and trust in Christ. As God the Spirit leads you, would you ask Him to be your Savior? It's a simple prayer. 
The simplicity of it is that you just say at that point and level that you are, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I failed. I know that you died for me, that you rose, and I ask you to be my Savior. Don't pray my prayer. Pray what God lays on your heart, whether you're sitting here this morning or you're listening to this at some other time. Put your faith and trust in Christ. Where can I best serve you, Lord, so that I can sacrificially give of myself and of my resources? Where can you share Christ? Father, I ask that your blessings be upon this time of the invitation, that we would respond accordingly, that we would be thankful that the great God and King of the universe, the Creator of all, God the Son, Jesus the Messiah, the one who came to save us from our sins, Lord, help us to be thankful for you. Help us to live for you. Help this season to be a season that we're saying more than just Merry Christmas, but we're remembering the Christ who brought us Christmas. And we ask this in Jesus' name.